So we're speaking to you out of Johannesburg, South Africa. A wonderful, warm, sunny day. Temperatures outside of uh, 36 degrees C, I think it is. We're suffering. Uh, we're really suffering, but uh, <laughs> on the one hand. On the other hand, we're talking about the future of business. Uh, and I have with me three eminent international futurists. Uh, on my right, Neil Jacobson, joint CEO of Future World South Africa. Then Gerd Leonard from Basel, Switzerland. Doug Vining, editor of Mind Bullets, your news from the future. And I'm Anton Musgrave, uh, joint CEO of Future World South Africa. We're discussing the future of business, and if I said to you, Gert, what do you think is one of the biggest challenges facing the CEO in contemplating his or her business of tomorrow? Yeah, it would take me about five hours to summarize it. <laughs> now, briefly, I mean, the, clearly the, the amount of change brought on by technology is mind-boggling. Augmented reality, social, local, mobile phones, tablet devices, uh, uh, video, over-the-top video, yeah. the change yeah. of education, mobile money. I mean, you take all these <laughs> things together. It, uh, we talked about all this stuff in the late 90s as if it was true, it, was, it wasn't, but now it's all happening at once. Uh, and now we're looking at globalization, we're looking at older demographics, we're looking at sustainability and renewable energy, we're looking yeah. at all these issues becoming top level issues. And of course, it's, it's now sort of a global interconnected system. Huge challenge. That's the critical word to me, is this concept of interconnectivity, because it's the connectivity that's changed. The fact that everything is now connected. I saw the numbers the other day, 7 billion people on this planet and more than 6 billion mobile subscriptions around the world. Never before has, in the history of mankind have we been so connected. And of course that's opening the possibilities to endless innovation and to completely radical ways that business is going to have to perform in the future. And that's a double-edged sword because that same connectivity has uh, enabled people, especially in countries like Africa and in Asia where people were disconnected from markets and from opportunities, yeah. so it's given them tremendous opportunity and at the same time, the traditional incumbents who had the market leaders who had the power are now being challenged by these new emerging leaders. You know what that connectivity is also introducing, Doug, is an interesting dilemma for business. Because on the one hand, we've got this absolute focus on short-termism short that we've spoken of earlier this afternoon. But on the other, we've got more and more people with a voice, and they're airing this voice because they're not, being, not seeing the fruits of all this growth and innovation that we talk about. So you have the voice of... Um, the sort of economically impoverished, if you like, around the world. And that's asking some big questions about what is the future of capitalism. Mm. And so I think one of the big questions for an executive is to understand what will the measurement of success be in the world of tomorrow? What will the future success metrics be? Because it simply can't be P-E ratio, market cap, and sales volume. Yeah, I mean, it's a constant uh, conflict, of course, when you're talking about business, uh, because the the mindset until now was that everything having to do with profit and growth was a good thing. That's it. Uh, yes. And that has topped out, as we see in America. You know, yep. This, what I call, turbo capitalism. Yep. Uh, not to talk bad about capitalism, but basically what happened there is that it topped out eventually when you've grown as much as you can. That's right. And you can't grow unilever or a part time gamble 10% a year. We're talking about billions. That's mm -hmm. right. So what do you do? Then you have to grow like this, and you have to have different emphasis and this is a huge change also in the, I think in five uh, years we'll have much less of a stock market domination yeah. than we have today this sort of you know people will be punished in fact for not thinking yeah. into the future. Well if you remember good what was the reason for a company seeking a listing in the first place? Two things very simply raise public profile and raise capital, yeah. capital. and both of those uh, needs are being addressed in other innovative ways through connectivity uh, networks of people, etc., etc. So really interesting about what's the future relevance of the stock market, in fact. And it, you yeah. know, the, the whole implication is that it's, it's, a, it's the, I call it the greatest power shift that mankind has ever seen. It's the shift of power from institutional power, governments, big businesses, into the hands of the connected individual. And so few businesses have actually realized that they've gone through a power shift, that they are no longer in control of the marketplace, that the customers are in control of the marketplace. You know, we've said customer is king for many, many decades. But it's never been truer than it is now. <laughs> it's interesting. The customer in the old days used to be the one that can push the buy button. That's right. Or not. Yeah. Yeah. And, and today they can say rate yeah. or like. Or uh, like. Uh, like yeah. economics, right? Yeah. This, this uh, yeah. book, great book yeah. out there. You should take a look at. But mind-boggling the change. And I think when you talk about the future of business, you have to be in a way almost be like a kid in a sandbox, discovering all these new different yeah. things. And this is quite hard when you're an incumbent. Well, I mean, I think uh, the bigger problem is that the ten natural human tendency is to see this as a threat. So it's fight or flight. Um, and so we see all of these shifts as threats to our existing model, rather than seeking the opportunity in those for doing something profoundly different. Yes, especially if we take something like 3D printing. Now, that completely <laughs> changes the concept of manufacturing, manufacturing yeah. from a big organization out to the many consumers. Now yes. the consumer 
can choose whether they want to make this or that or their customized version of something using yeah. a 3D printer. Yeah. Well, it points to one of the, uh, I mean, for example, in the music business, we have this piracy issue and then the movie business, same thing. And now we have piracy of physical products. Yeah. Absolutely. So you want to have an iPhone cover, you don't have to buy one from the Chinese company, you can print yeah. one. Print your own. And print your own shoes, maybe. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think of what's happening in America with Obama and he wants to introduce gun control, you can go and print your own firearm now <laughs> using a 3D printer. So what's the relevance of legislation when you're trying, trying to prevent uh, fit weapons? And, and I think for me, the next big thing for an executive is to think, how do I hold both of these issues? How do I operate in a world of dualities? And if you think about the language of business, the language of business was, was quite sort of uh, um, uniform in that let's beat the competition, win market share, kill the opposition, whereas we're shifting towards a world of a different language. It's very really militaristic. Then. It is, yeah. and it's about collaboration, it's about sustainability, it's a whole different vocabulary for business, I think. Yeah, yeah the language of war shifts into the language of uh, love, yeah, maybe not. The language of collaboration. <laughs> but you know, if you look, I do a lot of marketing and advertising people, I do yeah. a lot of work with those guys. And they have this. They have the campaigns and the targeting, and yeah. you know, very military. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, they have to talk about like engagement, yes, yeah. yeah. involvement. Yeah. Yeah. And this is this is like uh, uh, you know, it's all the stuff we talked about in the '60s, yeah. finally happening on the web, and that is forcing us to create a new ecosystem. And I think we're seeing this in energy, renewable energy system. We're yes. seeing this in media. Yes. We're seeing this in politics. We're seeing this across the board, and and that is sort of the solution for a lot of the larger issues. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but this is a real, as you say, it's a huge mind shift. Yeah. Uh, future business. And you know, you've, uh, the sort of the, the industries that are more virtual, I mean, the media industry and so forth, they've already made these shifts. Yeah. But now it's starting to impact on the manufacturing industry, on the industrial industries. And that's where I'm finding that there is very little understanding from, from executives that their world is going to be affected by this and change, change as well. You know, the mining industry, well, you know, that's about digging a hole, you've got an ore body in a certain place. But that's all changing. The way you get the, the robotic opportunities, the way you get the gold out, or whatever it may be, the way you transport it, these things are changing. How you market it is changing completely. It's funny, I, I would say to the, to the pharma guys, you guys are the next music business. Yeah, <laughs> Because, you know, the crowdsourcing of this kind of in innovation is happening in the patents only seven years. And so this is really, they're facing this huge patent crunch now. Mm -hmm. They have to invent quicker and uh, they have to go into more niches. So yeah. it's very similar. Have you seen the game Fold It? Uh, yeah, yeah. Where scientists actually used an online yes. collaboration around gaming to unfold the protein molecule in the HIV AIDS virus yeah. and solved a technical problem which the scientists couldn't do in 10 years, they solved in three weeks. Yeah. And incredible. And that the mind shift to, to bear yourself and admit to your competitors what you don't know, yeah. but rely on the power of collaboration to solve the problem. Yeah. You know. I mean, that's, that's one of the lines that we always use to open up our conversations with chief executives is that we're here to explore what you know about the future, what you don't know about the future, but the most important question is what you don't know that you don't know about the future. <laughs> and that that's, takes a bit of getting your head around it, but it really is about what I don't know is going to happen next. Ask any tax practitioner, what you don't know that you don't know is the most dangerous of all. <laughs> I, mean, it's it's I, mean, I think the future of business, to me, all my clients are worried about their future. I was saying, you know, it can't be that when six billion people are connected to each other, and they have these devices to be in touch, and it's low cost yeah. and high speed, and it can only be a good thing for business. Really. It cannot be a bad thing, really, except for that if you don't want them to connect. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you come from the music industry. I think it was Edgar Bronfman who made that famous quote that the music industry is growing, but the record industry is dying. Yes. <laughs> and that many industries are going to face exactly that. Yeah. Great. So uh, that was the future of business. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.